All right, so section 11.3, uh, we're going to get into hyperbolas. Um, so hyperbola, that you can see from the picture in the middle of the page here, um, kind of like a parabola as far as the shape goes, but not exactly. Um, they're a little bit different even in the shape, but they do look similar. Um, the equation, which we'll see in a minute, is very similar to the ellipse, and that's what this one, this kind of statement starts off with. They have completely different shapes, but their definitions and equations are similar. So instead of the sum of the distance between the two fixed foci, as in the case of the ellipse, we use the difference. Um, so a hyperbola is the set of all the points in the plane, uh, the difference of whose distances from two fixed points is a constant so you so we take we have this point on the hyperbola we take the difference from this focus point minus this focus point and that will always be a constant uh, no matter where you are on either of these parts of the line um so let's talk about the uh equations and so like the what we've talked about so far in this chapter, uh, we're going to be centered at the origin. Um, the next section, we're going to start moving things around a little bit, but for now, we're, everything's going to be centered at the origin. And so if you notice, let's zoom in a little bit for this. Um, so the equation is basically the same as what the ellipse is, except we are subtracting instead of adding. So that's the main difference. And, um, and then as far as the A and the B go, uh, it doesn't matter. That doesn't affect which direction we're in. Um, so you can see we have the horizontal and we have the vertical. Um, if you recall with the ellipse, the bigger number would tell you which direction is stretched out more. With hyperla, it is whichever one is the positive, uh, is the X part positive or the Y part. So usually, usually the positive part minus the other part. Um, so whichever one has the positive coefficient is going to be the, the direction that it is. So when it's x squared minus the y squared, we're horizontal. If it's reversed, uh, y squared minus x squared, then it's going to be uh, vertical. And we always put A. So notice A is listed first and then B, um, A and then B. Um, I guess that doesn't matter too much, but as far as using our formulas, you probably want to keep that um, the way that it is, um, be consistent with that. Um, but a, a or B could be bigger. So neither one of these, I mean, either one, either one could be bigger. We're not guaranteed that A is going to be bigger than B. Doesn't, you know, could go either way. Uh, the vertice will always be plus or minus A. Um, and then whichever direction we're going um, will tell you if that's going to be an X or a Y. So looking at this, you can see we don't have a Y intercept. And so that's one way, if you if you forget um, which way it's supposed to be, you can figure out, do you have an X intercept or do you have a Y intercept, um, at least in this section. So once you start shifting around, obviously you could have both. Um, but if we're centered at the origin, you will not have an x-intercept and a y-intercept. You'll have one or the other, but not both. We have what's called the transverse axis. And so that's just how the distance between the two parts of this. And that's just going to be 2a. So whatever that number is under the first term here, uh, double it. Well, the square root of that number. Uh, double it, and that will give you the length between these two. And then uh, these have oblique asymptotes. Um, I don't think we talked about oblique asymptotes when we were doing rational functions. Um, but an oblique asymptote is neither horizontal nor vertical. Um, it is a diagonal asymptote or a slant asymptote, sometimes called. Um, and so the the reason these are different from a parabola is these these parts coming out like this are going to uh, approach this asymptote but never actually cross it whereas um, with a um, parabola it's going to get steeper and steeper um, instead of just going out more linearly. Um, 
And then like the ellipse, we have focus points and the focus points are just like with and with a parabola, I guess they're more similar to a parabola kind of because they're kind of in, in the bowl of this. Um, or if we're talking about the vertical, they're going to be look, you know, very much like the parabola is. Um, found similarly to the ellipse, except we are adding instead of subtracting. So if you remember with the ellipse, the C squared it would equal A squared minus B squared. Um, so one way you can remember this is the hyperbolas in the equation are subtracting. And then when you're finding C squared, you're going to be adding. And with the ellipse, it's, it's reversed. With the ellipse, you're adding in the equation and then you're subtracting with the focus points. Um, so that's kind of the basics. Um, so let's look at an example here. Um, and we have steps to sketching these. So on web assign, you don't have to sketch these. You can, you can, they're, they're multiple choice. Um, so you're not having to click points to plot these. They're just multiple choice. Uh, so really, once you, really all you need to select a graph on web assign, uh, you need to know which, is it horizontal or vertical? And then find the vert vertices. And that's usually all you need. Um, it's kind of it's kind of difficult to get um, any more particular points because um, with with WebAssign they don't have a grid, and so it's a little bit hard to get precise points besides uh, the vertices. So probably that's all you need to select points or to select the correct graph. Um, but we'll talk about how to graph these, and and this is kind of the the steps to do that. If you wanted to graph these by hand, um, so we have the equation. Uh, 9x squared minus 16y squared equals 144. We're going to find the vertices, foci, length of the transverse axis, asymptotes, and then we're going to sketch the graph. So the first thing we need to do, uh, we obviously want this to be equal to 1. So we're going to divide both sides by 144. And so that gives us uh, x squared over 16 minus y squared over nine equals one. Um, so this is going to be a horizontal one uh, since the x squared is the first term. So that tells us that a squared is 16, which means that a is going to be four or plus or minus four, I guess we could say. Uh, b squared is nine. And so b is going to be plus or minus three. And then we can find uh, c squared is going to be uh, a squared plus b squared. And so we get that c is c squared is 25. And so uh, our focus points will be uh, plus or minus 5, comma, 0. So, um, so the vertices come from a. And so we have plus or minus four, zero. Uh, focus points come from the C. So that'll be, and, and if this is the X coordinate, the focus points will also be on the X axis. This is on the X axis. So the focus points will also be on the X axis. Um, the length of the transverse, I know I'll write the whole thing, but the length of the transverse is absolute value of two times A. So that would be eight. And then uh, the asymptotes. Now these will always go. I didn't really talk about these as far as the formula goes, um, but these are always at least at least in this section since um, we're centered at the origin. The asymptotes will go through the origin, and um, it's going to be the 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 length of the you know, from the origin to the vertex uh, on the y and then uh, going out to the x. So there's really a over b would obviously be the slope in this formula and, and uh, or in this e e equation of the asymptote. Um, and so slope is always changing y over change in x. So that's why, and so you really don't have to worry about a over b or b over a in this case, it's just gonna be the y over the x. Um, so that's a little bit easier. Don't worry about the a and the b. Um, 
as far as which you know, is it B array? Is it is is the y part over the x part? The the length of the y vertex, and then the length of the x vertex. No matter which way it goes. Um, all right. So for this one, um, this would give us so the length vertically is three, and then horizontally is four. So the asymptotes would be y equals plus or minus three fourths x. Um, all right, so now we can sketch this. And again, all you need on WebAssign, um, you'll have some some of the answer, two of the answer choices will be vertical, two will be horizontal. So we know this one's horizontal. And then one of the one of the answer choices have a vertex, the vertices at four and negative four, and then the other horizontal answer choice will have different vertices. So it's not that hard to pick these out, but we'll we'll sketch this as if we needed to sketch it by hand. Um, may not do these with every example, but we'll at least do it for this one. So we're going to go out four horizontally. We're going out three up and down three vertically. And then um, what we're going to do is kind of sketch a little box around this. So there's our uh, vertex at negative four and then go down to three and then we're going to go out to positive four and then just catch that little box so we have uh four three negative four negative three and then the diagonals of this box form your asymptotes like that so there are our two asymptotes and then they're really just so we're horizontal since the x squared is first. And we're just going to kind of draw it like that. And I should, it goes through that point. And then draw this one like this. And then our focus points are at 5 and negative 5. So let's just put a little focus point at 5 and negative 5. And that is it. That's all there is to it. Um, so the, I think the hardest part probably about these is just keeping straight what you need to do um, with the vertices and focus points. And uh, you know, they're very similar to the ellipse. So that, that can be a little bit confusing because you're kind of doing similar but different things. Um, I, think it's, I think it helps to remember um, these have a, a minus. They're subtracting in the equation and then adding for the C whereas the ellipse is opposite. So um, if you can keep those two things straight, I think this will be a little bit easier to keep up with. Um, but we'll, we'll stop this one here and then uh, continue with some more examples in the next video.